The history of the CIA largely focuses on the men who helped shape the world's leading spy agency, but it's actually a group of five women who played a big role in founding the agency. The new book, Wise Gals, The Spies Who Built the CIA and Changed the Future of Espionage, is the never-before-told story of those women. Author Natalia Holt joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. How is it possible we haven't heard, or the, you know, the vast majority of people might not have heard these women's names? Well, these are women that it took me years to track down, to find their stories and to declassify their documents with the CIA, to be able to reveal the wealth of intelligence that they collected during the Cold War. These are women that joined the CIA after their service in World War II. And so much of our history has focused on the failures of the CIA during the Cold War. Um, but my book tells for the first time many of the successes, operations that haven't been told before. But because of these women, we're able to reveal Soviet fighter jets and biological weapons and many different plots. So were you able to track down these women yourself and interview them as part of this research? I didn't because unfortunately these women have passed away and this is a book that could not have been written were they still alive because I would not have been able to declassify the documents related to them. But fortunately I was able to track down their colleagues so I interviewed many former CIA officers that these women had worked with. I also tracked down their families and that was such a pleasure because I was able to get letters and diaries. And many of these families had no idea what their mothers and grandmothers had been part of uh, during the Cold War. So it was just such a delight to be able to really delve into that period of history with them. Now, that's astounding when I think that in that age, you know, women, I don't know, a divorced Adelaide was a divorced mom of three, and she was a, she was doing all this work for the CIA. How, how was that possible that no one in her family knew what she was doing? That's right. Adelaide Hawkins was a single mom of three. She came from a small town in West Virginia. She had only a high school education. She knew that people expected little of her, and she used this to her advantage because she knew that no one would suspect she was a spy. And so while she was off doing operations in Europe, her children back home had no idea what she was part of. They thought that she was merely a secretary. And it wasn't until after she passed away that the truth was revealed. Another fascinating story here, uh, one of the women, Jane, uh, who was an intelligence officer. And then after World War II, she went on a, on a treasure hunt looking for Nazi gold in the Italian Alps. Uh, Italian Alps. Uh, sounds like uh, the plot of an Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> It's an exciting story. You know, there was a real fear after World War II that the Nazis were hiding treasure as a means to return to power. And so this group of espionage agents were focused on getting these treasures, tracking them down. And it happened because Jane was able to interrogate a German spy codenamed Flush. She then was led to this castle in the Italian Alps where they found sacks of gold just sitting out under a stand of trees. And they brought this gold back to the station and they counted 103 pounds of gold coins worth some $6 million today. Mm. It was an astounding find. Um, and really, it is just part of Jane's remarkable career at the CIA. One other woman, Elizabeth uh, Sudmeyer, grew up on a reservation in South Dakota. Talk about what she did. Yes, she grew up on a reservation in South Dakota. She then served in World War II, stationed in Alaska. She went to junior officer training at the CIA, where she was sent to Syria and then Iraq. And in Baghdad, she was able to grow her own spy network using resources that no male officer had access to. And those were a beauty salon and a dress shop. And using these, these resources, she then was able to create a network where they, doc they, they transferred secret documents between them and revealed the blueprints of Soviet fighter jets. And Elizabeth was incredibly brave. She, even during the 1958 revolution in Iraq, when every other CIA officer was fleeing the country, Elizabeth Sudmeyer stayed behind. She was the only CIA officer to do so. And she did this to keep feeding intelligence back to Washington, as well as protecting their agents and their spies in Iraq.
Wow, it's fascinating. The book is Wise Gals, The Spies Who Built the CIA and Changed the Future of Espionage. For more information, you can check out NathaliaHolt.com or follow her on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a pleasure to talk to you. You too. Take care.